Hello and welcome to 21st Century Vitalism, a podcast asking the question, what does it mean to be fully alive in the 21st century? And how do we best embody that aliveness while dealing with the unique stressors of this strange and potent time? I'm your host, Brett Kane. I'm a licensed massage therapist and mindfulness meditation instructor, and I have an insatiable curiosity to figure out what the heck is driving people to stay motivated and uplifted in this really, really bizarre and uncertain time that we're facing. So joining us on the show today is the one and only Allison Denny from Rebel Massage. My fellow massage therapist compadres need no further introduction, but for the folks who are uninitiated, Allison is a massage therapist of 20 years who has a probably one of the biggest massage tutorial channels on YouTube, close to 50 million views on all of her content. She creates really amazing in-depth tutorials on how to navigate some of the most common postural issues of the human body that we typically see as therapists. She's also one of the founders of the Massage Mentor Institute, which is a new virtual education community that a bunch of teachers are coming together to uh, spread their very specific views of how to navigate the world of body work. This conversation was really cool for me to have as a therapist who has learned a lot from her content. We cover a whole heap of really unique conversation points from using massage as an awareness practice to the importance of the therapeutic relationship. And we talk a little bit about trauma and really as a client, how to make the most out of your uh, massage time and how to really take the wheel of your own wellness practice. So this is going to be really relevant for therapists and people who are just looking to explore new practices. That's really something I want to hammer with this platform is that body work really is such a powerful modality. Even if you don't have chronic pain or deal with anxiety. This can really be something that you use to generate a deeper seat of awareness within uh, your body structures and the way that you hold yourself and how your emotions affect your body. This is really the meat and potatoes of what this show is about, is yoking the mind and the body to really have a felt sense of these being the same thing and being indistinguishable. So this conversation I really enjoyed. If you have plugged it into any of her content, you know she's an extremely well-informed and compassionate human being who has a lot to offer the world of health and, you know, massage at large. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, folks. Uh, this was huge. This was really fun for me. I enjoy my time talking to body workers who have been in the game for much longer than me. It really gives me a sense of motivation and enthusiasm and inspiration to continue deepening my practice, which is my day job, if you will. So that's what's on the menu today, folks. I think you're all really going to like it. Uh, I definitely enjoyed having the conversation. So if you want to keep in touch with her platform, rebelmassage.com, if you look her up on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, YouTube being her primary mode of communication, I think you're going to get a lot out of it. Again, even if you're not a massage therapist, just hearing the way that she views the body can be really illuminating. I don't know if you all can hear the cat that's outside my door right now. She doesn't ever meow unless I'm actually recording. That is, that is truth. It's either that or if I have a client, then she wants to let me know that she you know, wants the pets. So that's my life in a nutshell. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can head on over to patreon.com slash 21st Century Vitalism. Right now we have early supporter pack kind of situation where it's just kind of helping me meet the bottom end of the show and you know maintain the financial incentive for me to continue producing this. Uh, it does take a lot of time per week, which I love doing. I really enjoy doing this show. So yeah, if you want to, you know, support us when we're in this early stage of building, I'd really appreciate it, and it will secure more energy for the show. Uh, if you don't want to support financially, that's totally okay. We can also have you leave a review on Apple Podcasts. That is like the gold standard of podcasts. You can subscribe on YouTube. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. I'm most active on Instagram at this point. We also have a website, 21stCenturyVitalism.com, where you can look at all the prior episodes. Uh, you can look at any, you know, we got some bonus content there. I've been doing these book reviews in between episodes, which you can find on YouTube. I'm starting to do uh, have them on Spotify too, so keep an eye out for those. We just did The New Rules of Posture by Mary Bond, and that is such a powerful book. If you're into body work, 
either give that episode a listen or just go get the book, uh, Mary Bond's New Rules of Posture. It is incredibly important in my view. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, we have Allison Denny coming on to talk to us about her extensive history with uh, massage therapy. So sit back, drink some tea, do some stretches, and most importantly, open your heart for Allison. And we are now live. Hello and yeah. welcome to 21st Century Vitalism. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be here and thanks for having me. Of course. I got to start by saying that it's pretty surreal for me to be having a conversation with you right now. Uh, I graduated from my massage therapy program in 2020 out of all years, so I'm very fresh, and we ended up missing out on a couple months of schooling, so I had to turn to YouTube to continue my education, and you were one of the main channels that I actually ended up really kind of getting attached to, and I definitely dive through a lot of your content. So I just want to start by saying like it's an honor to have you on the show, and uh, yeah, you do what looks to be really great work. Thank you so much. I'm so glad. I mean, I made the channel for that exact purpose, and I love to hear that it's actually getting used. So it's nice. Thanks. Yeah. So for myself and for some of your fans who may have not heard your story, I kind of wanted to start this off by just exploring how you found the field of massage therapy and like what drew you to it and uh, just how your career has kind of unfolded to be where it is now. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. So I, I was in living in Boulder, Colorado at the time and uh, kind of unsure about what I wanted to do. I was waiting tables and worked in, you know, here and there. Um, and I, I was receiving a lot of massages because I was really active at the time. I was racing triathlons and, um, just working out a lot as people in Boulder do. <laughs> and, um, I just kind of one day was like, I think I could do this. And this, the Boulder college of massage therapy, at the time was considered one of the best schools for massage in the country. And I was like, you know, I'm going to go check it out. And I did, and I loved it. And I, um, I don't know, I, I ended up, it wasn't like the universe called me to do it, but I definitely feel like looking back at it, I would never have done anything different. So I'm, you know, I just, it didn't feel so super clear to me at the time, but I've loved every minute. That's amazing. It's weird how this profession seems to really call out to certain kinds of people. And you definitely need like a very specific set of capacities in order to be successful and actually really find passion in it. So how mm -hmm. long have you been practicing for, if you don't mind me asking? I don't. Uh, I mean, 22 years, I guess now. I graduated in October of 2000. That's so a really long time ago. But yeah, I mean, I think the thing that drew me to it in the beginning was like the flexibility and kind of the ability for me to be my own boss and, you know, those kinds of things. I didn't want to be stuck at a nine to five. I didn't want to be stuck at a desk. And I knew I liked movement and I liked, I felt like I was good with my hands. So those kinds of things fit. And then all these other things kept falling into place. Like, you know, just all these things that unfolded about how much I've learned about myself emotionally, how much I've learned about myself anatomically, how much I've learned about myself physiologically, like, you know, and then, and then using that to kind of, I don't know, grow my practice and be a good person and all the things that we try to do as humans. <laughs> yeah. That's something I wanted to talk about a little bit later in the conversation too, is that massage therapy is a practice that helps our clients, but also as therapists ourselves, it really is kind of like an awareness practice. I really, I associate it really closely with my yoga practice and that I'm using my body in very specific shapes and forms. And I don't know about you, but it has really expanded the way that I feel in my body just by holding that space for other people. 
Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, 100%. I'm not going to even come close to saying it doesn't do that. And it's it's wonderful for that reason. And there are lots of modalities that do that, Pilates, yoga, like you said. And I think there's um other careers that we can choose that do that. But I do believe I'm kind of, of a, I'm a proponent of um, believing that no matter what you're in, you can choose to make that a learning practice and you can choose to help that to grow you on some level. I think that's just kind of part of life. But yes, I think the ways that that unfolds itself in the field of bodywork and massage are a lot more clear and a lot more direct. And I think we as bodyworkers talk about it a lot. It feels very real and evident. Yeah, I think a big part of that as you say, that is like the rawness and the intimacy that it takes to be a therapist. When you have somebody on your table, there's really nowhere else that you can be in that moment. And I think there's something about that, like presence and being in the moment with somebody else as they're coming to you with, you know, chronic pain issues, or they're like seeking relief from their suffering, you know, by being kind of a servant of alleviating pain, it really does something by just... There's just nowhere to hide from it. You know, it's really unique in that way. Yeah. I mean, really well said, Brett. I feel like it's just the presence of being in a session offers so much to our own awareness and to the awareness of, like you said, pain and pain management and, and, you know, helping a client through that is beyond rewarding. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's, it helps us to, kind of grow and expand on so many levels very directly very directly yeah yeah I almost feel and you can correct me if I'm wrong but that that's a big part of what the massage therapist role is is that we're modeling that process because it's so ingrained with what we do that like when people pay for a session what they're getting is the cultivation of your presence you know I think like the best therapists I've had have been ones who've just been really tuned into my body which takes a degree of like mindfulness which I've also had some massages where it's like you are off in a completely different land and that's okay you know people different dispositions but you know I think a big part of what makes this therapy so special is the amount of time you have with somebody and the way you distill your presence to them through your hands Yes, 100%. But I'm going to echo what I said before. I really do think that that can show up in any career. And I think, I do think, like you're saying, that it's very evident and very, very real with what we do. But um, I don't know, I could talk about this for hours. I think that um, being authentic and knowing yourself helps other people around you be authentic and know themselves. So no matter what you're standing in, I know that when I'm around people, no matter what it is, if they're speaking at a conference or if they're, you know, um, working on a task that I know nothing about, some kind of mathematical or engineering thing that I, my brain doesn't understand, but if they are passionate about it, if they are authentic in who they are, and if they are kind of like really present in the moment, I get inspired to be the same. And I think that's, I think that's very true of who we are. So the more present we are, the more authentic we are, the more we know ourselves, the better our work is, the more our client is able to do the same thing and the, the more ease they have moving through whatever it is that they're facing. So, yeah. yeah. I love that. So I guess this is maybe um, maybe insular to the fact that we're both therapists, but what do you do when you have those like really tricky days where something in your own life is kind of keeping you from really making that contact with your client in like a full way? I mean, do you have those days still? Or are you able to kind of compartmentalize it? Or are you enlightened as no, what I'm I asking? No, totally I have those days. <laughs> I'm fully a human being. I fully yeah. have those days. Um, I've gotten to the place, I mean, I am a 52 year old woman and I have gotten to the place where I acknowledge that, um, when those days happen, there's, there's a lot of just having to sit in it and ride through it. And if I fight it, it gets worse. And so, um, a lot of what happens for me is that I, uh, have spent many years really working on 
looking at a thought when it comes in and acknowledging acknowledging that thought for what it is and trying to decide if it's helpful or harmful and and then unlayering, you know, who I am underneath that thought. And I think that um, when the hard days come, when the frustrating clients show up or, you know, the, the situations that arise that are harder to deal with, harder to face, um, it's just, it's, it's kind of having the wisdom to know that I am a human on this earth and I am, I am very vulnerable to all the things that we are vulnerable to. Like I'm, if I don't sleep well, I can feel it. If I am not eating well, I can feel it. If my hormones are off, I can feel it. So to answer your question, I try to do all the things every day to keep my hormones and my nervous system in check. <laughs> and that's not always easy, but I feel like that's kind of the base. I feel like if if our internal systems are firing well, we can handle the harder stuff better. But, um, you know, we don't always have control over that. We don't always understand it as well as we want to. And so on those days, I just kind of breathe a whole lot, <laughs> try to ride the storm and, and know that it'll pass because, you know, everything passes in time. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That, that, was, that was beautiful. Yeah, there's <laughs> definitely something about being gentle with yourself when you're in a healing profession such as this or something where you are caring for other people. And just like also holding yourself in that space as well of like, yeah, like you said, we are human. We also have our own internal weather patterns. Sometimes it's really cloudy and actually inviting that into the space as well, instead of like trying to leave it at the door, you know, like, Oftentimes for me, I'm always like, oh, they can totally feel that I'm like angry right now or they can feel this and they rare, nobody ever does. If anything, they say like the opposite, like that was the best session I've had with you. And I'm like, oh yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I also think it's okay. Like I think to be able to say like, I'm having a hard day and today's one of those days that I'm struggling. And I think being real in that way is okay as well. I mean, you know falling apart and having to then lean on your client is not professional or acceptable. But I do think being real is, 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 it's, it's a, it's a fine line. It's a hard line to walk, but I think being real is something that people crave. People crave being around other people who are real. And I think that that's important in terms of connection and communication and healing. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that that's a really good thing to like also express that like you are also human in this situation too. And yeah, I like that emphasis that like I think that is a part of the healing potential of massage. Like it's like the session itself, the hands on the body, but it is also the connection that you have showing up, even though you know your day is going poorly and just be like hey, this is just how it is. Like let's do the thing, and you know I think that yeah, yeah. like you said, that's really healing. That's yeah, I mean, I think there's there's a couple things, you know, and it, I don't know how much you want to talk about this in general, but you know, the therapeutic relationship is is as re research has shown is so much more impor important. There's a lot more weight on the therapeutic relationship than there is on the actual techniques. It's just been proven over and over again, and so what does that mean? You know, who are you in that moment? Who is who is the client in the moment? What is that? What is that? connection like? What is that communication like? And then, you know, I also kind of, I look at it a lot like parenting and my kids are now 18 and 15 and I, I've learned a lot from them, but there's so many moments in parenting where I've just had to sit down and be like, I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm doing the best I can. And, and I, I maybe made a mistake and I, you know, will parent you as best I can, but I'm human and I'm, I'm learning too. And I think, that's okay. You know, it just, we, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to do everything perfectly. And I think especially in the body work field in the healthcare community, we kind of have to like be perfect all the time and create things that don't hurt people and don't, you know, and of course we want to strive to not create more pain, but you know, again, we're human and it's just normal to not know everything all the time. Yeah. We're not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that there's something about, I mean, that the, that's such an I, interesting idea. Like the therapeutic relationship is the more important part over the technique itself. And it reminds me of a, um, 
a tip that I heard from my teacher was that like you are the modality. It's like not the things that you do, but it's you as a person. And I think in like modeling that vulnerability, obviously within the um, ethical boundaries, you know, you don't want to sit there and be like, oh my God, my husband or wife is doing this thing. Right. <laughs> but, you know, just in modeling healthy coping mechanisms and like still showing up, I just think that, yeah, that is highly overlooked in a lot of medical communities. I think that's what really makes this a, a unique path within the school of medicine in that we spend so much time and we really get to build strong relationships with people, whether you try to or not, you know, it's just time spent equals more intimacy and vulnerability. And, you know, it's, it's powerful. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I'm a huge Brene Brown fan and she talks a lot about vulnerability and how important that is. And I just, I think there's so much to that when it comes to the work we do. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. So something I wanted to highlight, uh, as someone who I'm fairly new, as I said, in 2020, and I've already felt like I've went through so many philosophical changes with how I view the body and my role as a manual therapist. So I'm just kind of curious if you could kind of riff on the idea of where you're at with your view of the body. And I feel like every therapist kind of has their own, like, here's what I'm doing here. I'm changing the fascial structure. I'm nailing out these trigger points. I'm uh, communicating with the nervous system, which is kind of where I'm at. Um, after, you know, as extensive of a career as you have, what do you feel like your role is in helping people deal with pain? That is such a huge question. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Whatever it's... avenue you want to chop it up, we'll start broad. It's okay. And, you know... It's okay. I mean, it's a good question. I, it's just kind of like... um you know, I don't think that there's any one one answer for that. I, I think kind of my view as as a massage therapist, as a body worker, is that if you understand your anatomy and you understand your phys- physiology, then then what you do from there will fall into place. Because if you understand what a trigger point is and how it works. And then you understand when to use it and where where to look for it and when to appropriately apply trigger point therapy. If you understand fascia and you understand the layers of fascia and where it's sometimes thinner and sometimes thicker and where it can create adhesions or create or, or where you want fascia to be stronger, then you curate your work towards that. Then your myofascia release is what you want to use or or friction or whatever the technique may be. And, and this goes down the road. So if you understand, you know, the anatomic, the autonomic nervous system, and you understand fight and flight, then you understand anxiety, and you understand the deeper layers of, of where a person is sitting on your table and what they're going through. If you understand meridians, and you understand chi, like this is less kind of Western anatomical, but you're looking at all the layers of who we are and we are not simple creatures. And so I think that, um, the more you understand how things work, what they are and how they work, then it just is, it all flows from there. To me, there's no doubt about it. I consider myself a more Western science practitioner. I definitely feel like, um, I get really excited and and um, totally jazzed when I get to look deeper into you know cadavers or or look deeper into how something works or read the latest article on you know what interoception is or what's going on with fascia like the latest research I get really excited about that kind of stuff. But there is not one ounce of me that dismisses what thousands of, of, or you know, hundreds or however, however you want to quantify it, years of, of um, Eastern theory is applied to what we know and how being one with nature and being one with the connections of the people around you, how that influences us, and how those kind of Eastern and Western worlds meld together is all about kind of walking that fine line of being present then as a body worker, being present and listening and what is your client asking for in the moment and who is your client? Are they going to respond better to 
um, a nervous system kind of calming work? Are they going to respond better to more aggressive kind of getting down to a very specific dysfunction? Are they just wanting to be heard? Are they just wanting to relax? I mean, I just, I think it's all of it. I don't think there's any one thing that I um, feel like is the answer, but I will repeat that if you understand what things are and what things do, then you know better how to move forward. And I think that's always going to be my answer. Mm, I love that. Has it always kind of <laughs> been that intuitive approach for you? Or did you kind of start off with, I mean, you obviously start off with a few less tools than you keep expanding outward, but has that like transformation right. been, have you always been geared towards that? I think so. I mean, I definitely remember being in massage school and learning about Eastern theory. I remember my first shiatsu class and I was like, like, you can be associated with a color and a season. Like I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. And I found so much truth in that. I just, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't kind of, um, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. And I want to get into Ayurvedic medicine. I wasn't like totally going down that road, but I I resonated a lot with it and I thought it was really cool. But I also, I studied philosophy and religion when I was in college for my undergraduate degree, which is so long ago. And I, and I decided on that major because my first philosophy class I took, I was like, whoa, we can think about things in so many different ways. And we can understand, like, there are so many theories about how we as humans work, how we as, you know, how, how we relate to each other, how we move, you know, all the things and I, and I love talking about that stuff. I love thinking about that stuff. My brain has always gravitated towards all the complexities of who we are. And so I think um, it's, it's in me to just kind of like want to think in that broad spectrum. But I definitely feel like ultimately, ultimately my big answer when anybody asks me what kind of what modality they think they should do or what modality I really like. I always say, um, if you build it, they will come. Like, I feel like if you are who you are, then you'll attract the people who want your kind of work. And that's all it is. I do. I always think that's just kind of the bottom line. Yeah. That's definitely something I've picked up on my uh, small time doing this is that certain people just really resonate and it almost doesn't matter what tools I bring to it. They, I always kind of get like the same response. Like that felt amazing. Like, thank you so much. And it's like, I'm just doing wildly different things every time, but it, it seems to just be, it, it's like the modality is just the channel for us to kind of bring our energy and our presence through. And I think like the novelty, it helps you know, a little bit, but overall it's just kind of like where you are, you know, that's what's being communicated. Yeah. And who you are, Brett. I mean, there's something deep down about who you are that people really like. And so those people are going to feel safe with you. And mm -hmm. then once that is established, then the work is more effective. Yeah. I'm glad that you brought up the role of safety. This is something I've thought about a lot because what got me into body work was actually reading The Body Keeps the Score. If you're familiar, <sighs> Bessel van oh, yeah. der Kolk. I've talked about it a lot on this show, but it, the idea of our nervous systems not feeling safe and my current philosophy right now, and again, I'm not trying to pigeonhole, but essentially is that a lot of chronic pain and tension comes from hyperstimulated nervous systems, especially in the world that we're in right now. So for me right now, I've really been owning the fact that I do a lot of Swedish massage, um, not to, again, pigeonhole it because I'm also doing all this other stuff, but my role has been, I'm going to help you learn how to relax and train your nervous system to be able to enter that state beyond just being on the table. Um, so yeah, the fact that like safety in the nervous system, I mean, they've even shown has reduced the sensations of pain, you know? So yeah. Do you think that that's unique to massage therapy? I know like structural integration is a little bit more like clinical and intense. Do you think, uh, we kind of have a, um, uh, that's just kind of something inherent within what we do? Or do you think there's other things we can do to bolster that? I mean, I think, I think safety is different for different people. And if you, so the body keeps the score, that book talks a lot about trauma. It's really focused on trauma and, and, and we all experience trauma to some degree at some point in our lives. And, and some people, it may just be tiny and they may feel like they've had a pretty good life. And, and um, some people have huge, ginormous amounts of trauma. And I, I think regardless of 
the trauma that we've been through, we all feel like um, what we want is to be loved. <laughs> like that's kind of the bottom line. We just want to feel like somebody is really looking at us. Somebody's got our back and we, and we are loved for who we are. And I think trauma comes up when we don't get that when we're younger for a whole heap of reasons. But I think there's lots of other reasons we can feel that and start to internalize that. And so safety becomes about, you know, if, if, if somebody's really has a lot of anxiety and feels very anxious, f- feels very nervous about getting any body work or the work can't go too deep or, you know, the, this, the room has to be very calm and all the things have to be there, then their safety involves not having too much stimulation. Their safety involves just being able to kind of like be in a space and breathe, which I think is huge and amazing and a beautiful thing. But there's a lot of other people who feel safety when they're like, look, I work out like crazy and this is really hurting and I want you to dig in and I want you to get it done and I want you to like rip it apart. And that feels safe to them because they feel heard and they Mm -hmm. feel like I'm doing really hard work in my life and I want to be acknowledged for the work that I'm doing and you working on me and focusing on this thing feels like the thing that I want to to know that is being heard and seen in the world. And that's a safety thing. I think, you know, it depends on how you define safety. I mean, it's the same thing as success, like how you define success. Like there's all these different... There's all these different definitions that can be applied according to who you're looking at, who you're talking about. And I think safety is is a big one. I mean, I definitely think if I can just keep talking for a little bit, I feel like body work and massage tends to gravitate towards safety that is um, really helping people who have been through serious trauma because our ability to help people connect their emotional selves to their physical selves is a huge bridge. And that bridge can, can offer a lot of steps towards becoming whole again. And I think that definition of safety is so ginormous and so beautiful and so important and so integral to the work that we do that that conversation is never little when it comes to what we do and, 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 um, what part of our, our world or what part of our field that we are talking about. But again, I do think that there's a lot of really amazing therapists out there who are way more kind of aggressive and way more kind of like, we are going to look at the structure of who you are and we are going to take it apart and restructure it. And that feels so unsafe to a lot of people. But I think there's a lot of people out there who that's exactly what they want. And that's the safety they feel because they feel disjointed. And so to become rejointed or whatever the word would be, realigned, is, is what they're looking for. And I think that's where the definitions of these bigger words start to kind of like trickle down and fall into different pods. Wow. I love that. Yeah. I feel like lately as I've been growing into my practice and really leaning into this like relaxation first model, I personally, I'm just going to admit, I've kind of had this like aversion to more deeper tissue work, but you explaining it the way that you just did, I feel like it was kind of a light bulb moment for me. And they're like, oh, I'm actually just like not being as well-rounded as I could be. And I kind of always had the idea that like, we're here to like train you to like less deep work, you know, over time. Cause I've feel like I've heard some science where it conditions people to feel more pain. I I went down this like pain rabbit hole science thing. And that was one of the things that I heard. But the idea that, you know, some people actually do feel safety in that is actually really profound for me. So thank you for that. You're welcome. (laughs) We all just want to be heard. Yeah. So what is the role of the like soft muscle tissue in relation to our emotions? Because that's something that you, you kind of touched up on in that like the physical body is where the emotions are stored. That was, again, the body keeps the score. So like the role of the massage therapist in manipulating the muscle tissue, how does that create an emotional experience from your clinical experience? Um. Can you, can you ask that one more time? Cause I feel like I, I kind of get it. I just want to, so you're wanting to know, can you ask it one more time? Yeah. So like, what is the role of manipulating soft muscle tissue in creating like an emotional experience for somebody? Like, how is that, 
how is just doing a physical therapy like that? What does that do for somebody's emotional experience? Does that clarify? Um, I think that um, I, I might I might go a little bit off of what you're asking, but I feel like um, working on soft tissue, like I said before, uh, gets people to drop into themselves a little bit more and be more present. So one of the things that I talk about in my YouTube videos a lot is – um, that I'm not doing all the work. Like I want the client to be doing the work too. And so when I'm working on somebody's calf or somebody's shoulder or whatever, whatever the, the dysfunction is, and I'm doing all of this work, whether it be very deep structural work or whether it be very grounded, slow healing, kind of, you know, more, uh, soothing work. Um, I'm re- guiding the client to drop in and and be very present with where I'm working on. Or if the focus is kind of, you know, if if let's just say they're having low back pain and I'm working on the hip, then I'm, I'm focused on the hip, but I'm asking them to keep their awareness on the low back or on the issue and asking them to do a lot of work with their own presence of what's going on for them. In the same way that we, you know, like we were talking about before, the idea of, you know, when you see it, when, when you have a thought, being able to look at that thought and then step aside from that thought and ask yourself if it's productive or not productive. I think that clients can feel something and maybe that thing is associated with the word pain, but maybe that pain is productive and maybe that pain is not productive. And then it just depends. So I do think there's a lot of tension that is productive and that that's a really kind of like almost like you don't say that in the massage therapy world. You'd like, that's not something that we discuss. But um, I do think that dropping a person into what they're feeling and um, getting somebody to understand what their body could feel like or 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 what they were wanting it to feel like and and creating manipulation around what their goal is and around what you understand anatomy to be able to do then then you are connecting their internal process their emotional process their psychological process to their physical being and that is where i think I think just it all kind of lies right there because there is no disconnect. There is absolutely no disconnect, but we are so disconnected. I mean, as a culture, as a, as a, as a huge mass of species, we are very much like we think internally and then we feel physically and we don't connect the two or we don't know how to connect the two. And so I think the work we do with, um, with soft tissue, the, the manipulations that we do if done well with the client very present in the moment can become something that they start to understand, oh, I can think this way and it changes what my body does. And I think that's a giant step for them often. Wow. Yeah. I like the emphasis of kind of bringing the client into, uh, if not the driver's seat, like the passenger seat and actually involving them in their wellness journey. I just wrote a blog about this on my website about how important it is to have a view of what your wellness is and to actually kind of like familiarize yourself with what's happening rather than just like getting conked out on the table and just kind of being passive and allowing it. I feel like by really bringing them into it, you allow them a greater opportunity to have a deeper experience because now they're kind of forming a vocabulary that they can kind of move their awareness around their bodies. And it really is, it's a meditative practice. You know, it can be. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I bring it back to parenting a lot again, because it's once you've raised a human you understand on a very deep level that they don't know something unless they've been shown how to do it oftentimes, most yeah. of the time. And so, you know, teaching a child to, to, you know, I don't know, tie a shoe or zip a zipper or, you know, whatever the basic things are that we, or even walk, like teaching a child to walk, which we just take for granted. You don't really realize that they have to learn it and figure it out and you have to be there to guide them and, Um, and I think we are never taught at any point in general from, for for the most part, how to connect our emotional selves to our physical selves. It is not something we are taught in school. It is not something that is commonly like 
parents don't commonly sit down every day and go, okay, tell me why, where is tension in your body today? And let's connect that to what you were, like, that just, that conversation doesn't happen. I think it might be happening more in this current world, but, um, you know, it's just not, it's the more common theme is to be disconnected. And so, you know, teaching somebody how to connect is like teaching a child to walk or tie their shoe. It's just, they don't know. So, so you show them. Yeah. Yeah. I just did a book review. I I do those, uh, in between my episodes on, have you heard of Mary Bond at all? No. Okay. She's a structural integrationist who made uh, this book called the new rules of posture. And it's all about Mm -hmm. a lot of these like awareness practices and how to connect to these different posture zones. And for me, it was like one of the most profound books because it again, gives you, you know, the, the driver's wheel on how to cultivate an awareness of the internal body structures that are holding you up and creating graceful movement. And I feel like that kind of work is just exactly what is needed, you know, and it's really an offshoot of Vander Kolk's work. And I think right now, as we're dealing with so much anxiety and uncertainty, and we're all very mentally focused and worrying about the future and this and that, by bringing that awareness into our body, we have this really amazing opportunity to connect with the earth and to connect with our innate wisdom. And I think body work has a really wonderful way to open the door for people to do that. I tell Mm -hmm. most of my clients, like, you know, this can be a practice, like going to the gym that can really better your life, alleviate chronic pain. But more importantly is that this is a doorway into a a way to view yourself differently in a more expansive, expressive, graceful way. And I just think that that's something a a lot of popular culture doesn't really, I, I feel like there's kind of, I've already had this experience of talking with people like, oh, you're like a masseuse, huh? And they'll like crack jokes. And like, there's just no context for like the depth of this work. I feel like we're starting to, but it really is one of the most like primary, amazing, beautiful things that we have in the Western world to remember our place as humans on the earth, you know, especially, and you can't do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It takes a village even for our own, like it takes a village to raise a child, but it takes a village to raise our own inner child all the time. But yes, I also, I want to just touch on the fact that you know, body work, massage therapy, like the joke, oh, you're a masseuse. That, that, that's like, it's one of those things that used to really get under my skin, but I have seen the massage therapy field, the body work and massage therapy field become so incredible in the past 20 years since I've been doing this, become so profoundly smart and respected and um, pertinent and uh, the awareness of what we do is way more prolific than it used to be and way more, um, has a lot more stature, has a lot more kind of, um, integrity behind it than it used to. And, and I can't help but feel like for people like yourself, Brett, who are just entering this field, like that's, awesome. You guys are starting at this place that is like we massage therapy in my, if I had to predict it, we are about to explode. We are exploding. We're already starting. And I think there's so many cool things that are happening within our own field and community. And then how we're interacting with other professionals is becoming very legitimized and very real. And I, I just am so thankful for it because when I graduated from massage school, it was not even close. And I think that, um, our, where we're going and how far we've come is mind blowing. And I definitely think that our place in the world as, as healers, I, I hesitate to use that word, but as healthcare practitioners is, um, is just, it's something that is exciting to be on the cusp of. I think it's just going to explode and I'm excited for every therapist out there who's newer and just starting their journey because there is so much potential and so much opportunity. Yeah, it's it, exciting. It used to be like, you didn't even really need like a licensure, right? Isn't that? Oh kinda... no. When I went to school, you didn't even need, nope. You you didn't even have to go to school. Wow. Like you just didn't even need to just when I first shop. went to school. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. But, but, you know, the people that I learned from and the people that I'm still in contact with and the people that are really kind of forging the way are phenomenal humans and really believe in what we do. 
on such deep levels and it's everything that you and I are touching on, everything that you're talking about in this conversation, just the importance of the connection and the importance of um, the, the understanding of kind of all the different levels of who we are. It's huge, huge. Yeah. Yeah, the part about it that I'm still kind of grappling with is the accessibility level of massage mm -hmm. and that, mm -hmm. like, I feel like it's a human right. Like, I feel like this is an experience that everybody should have access to. But then at the same time, I'm like, but I like getting paid. <laughs> I like, you know, like surviving. And it's just, like, hard yeah. to, like, balance that. And it that's kind of part of the image, the social image, is that it's, like, this luxury. And, you know, you, like, go to this fancy spa and you have this whole experience. And, I mean, those are lovely experiences. But, it, you know, like, the, the new conversation that's having around it, I just wonder how that's going to affect its accessibility. I mean, I definitely have my two cents in that. I've, I have an opinions about everything, but <laughs> I definitely, I think that, um, that sentiment that you just expressed is, um, is, is really common and it's detrimental to who we are as therapists, because I think when we, when we, when we, when we feel empathy, we want to give and we, most of us enter this field because we are empathetic and, and that's a beautiful thing, and I don't ever want to dismiss it or belittle it on any level. But what happens as a flip side, what happens as the, as the result of that is that we often don't um, put ourselves first financially. We don't often think about create, growing a financially lucrative business because it feels – polar opposite. It feels contradictory to kind of like, but wait, I'm supposed to be like, I want the world to have a massage. Like just what you just said. I want everybody to experience this. It should be human right. And I get that. But I mean, it's the, it's the whole kind of, um, mom and the airplane analogy. Like you, you got to put your own oxygen mask on first before you put your child's oxygen mask on because you can't help your child if you're dead. Yeah. And I think that's kind of where I stand with that. I think that, that if we don't value ourselves and we don't place financial value onto what we're doing, then we're not, we're not in, this culture speaks in finances. And if we, if we can't talk that language, we're not in it. And I think that if we value ourselves financially, we then elevate who, where we stand. Um, and I think that it, once we've once we've been the person to elevate where we stand, then then other people see us in that same light, and then we do the more what's the phil philanthropic 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 work. There it is. Then we I said do it wrong the too. more <laughs> right. Then we do the more philanthropic work. Then we do the the work that you know take a day, every, take a one day a month, and go volunteer somewhere or. Or offer some kind of a cool thing where you give away a massage a week or whatever it is. I mean, there's so many amazing things that we can do and we can volunteer and we can donate. And like when we have enough resources in our inside of ourselves, the ability to donate is bigger. And that's the bottom line. Yeah. It's not about the fact that we are taking. It's about the fact that we are creating a solid foundation so that when we do give back, that giving is huge and, and way more broadly felt. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I kind of feel a lot of that same applies to my other, the other part of my wellness profession is that I teach mindfulness meditation. And I've already like come across some people who are like, oh, you're like profiting off of spiritual teachings, huh? And it's like, in order for me to maximize my beneficial output, like you have to be secure. If you're operating from like a looser, unstable ground, if you're not able to keep the lights on, then it's like, there's no benefit for anybody then, yep. you know? So it's, it's important to get that do part it. down. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So I'm kind of yep, curious sure. for people who are listening to this, who aren't massage therapists, um, and they're like, oh, this sounds like something that I could actually really benefit from. I have the money. How can somebody plug into this practice and make the most use out of receiving massages? Like, is there any like tips and things they should look out for to really, really use this as a genuine practice? Um, we, I, I, I think, I think you get out of it what you put into it. And it's, it's like anything else. I mean, if you are going to study finances or economics or you're going to study engineering or math or whatever it is, 
the more you put into it and dive deep and, and learn all about it, the more you're going to get out of it, period. And it's the same here. So if you're in a session and you're receiving a massage and you're not present and you're not asking questions or you're not listening and, and aware of what's happening to you, then you're not going to get out a lot. Uh, you're not going to get a lot out of it. So, I mean, I just think that's a basic truth. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And I think that there can be so much that you get out of it. All the layers of who we are is addressed in a massage therapy session so frequently. And if you are really in it and um, putting yourself fully into it, really present, really listening, really asking questions, really understanding the relationship that you have with this massage therapist, then you're going to get so much out of it. So much out of it. Yeah. Yeah. It all comes down to that, taking the wheel of your own wellness vehicle, Always. so to speak. You know, and mm -hmm. I, I think another thing for me is the breath. <laughs> you know, that's something that I, I wanted to also plug as well for people who are getting started is to like really explore where your breathing is at. You know, this might be a little bit more kitchen sink level um, receiving a massage, but I wonder, do you work with people like who potentially like are like, not breathing or like breathing really oh, yeah. heavy in their chest? Like, what is yes. that relationship yes. like? Huge. I mean, exactly what you just said. I think. I think you can watch a breath in the same way that you can watch a thought and where you're breathing or, or how, how deeply you're breathing or how shallow you're breathing or, um, you know, talking somebody through the ability to breathe beyond their diaphragm is often groundbreaking for them. And, and the idea that breath can expand into other tissues and into, you know, the cellular level of, of all, all the way down to the toes is something that a lot of people can't, don't really understand because it physiologically, you don't think that way. You think lungs and that's it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that if you can talk somebody through, I think breath is a, is an amazing kitchen. I don't even think it's kitchen sink. I think it's like a, it's a great tool to use every single time, no matter what. And I think there's lots of those things. I think, you know, being aware of kind of how your skeleton sits and, um, you know, what, what you feel and what you can't feel, or there's lots of different ways to, to bring somebody into the present moment. But breath is a good one. Breath is a really good one for yeah. sure. Yeah. It's definitely one of the main vehicles that I use to get my clients just be really centered in their body, especially if they're, they like talk a lot and like, I allow, you know, conversations, some people that is their safety. They don't, they're not ready to go into those like really deep layers of their bodies. So they're like, Hey, so, uh, you know, tell me about yourself. And, you know, right. I, I allow a little bit of that, but I will try and gently like, let's just like breathe for a second. And then I, I don't like keep pushing if they, they keep wanting to talk, but I, I just found that to be a really successful way to get some clients to just be really still within themselves. Yeah. Um, I had a client once a long time ago. I'll never forget this a long time ago. And, and they were not breathing. And I was trying to, I, you know, I was asking them to breathe and they still weren't really kind of breathing. And I then started to breathe myself in an effort to kind of, you know, I would sink into something and then I would take a deep breath. And then as I exhaled, I would kind of sink in a little bit deeper. And at the end of the session, they were like, I think you're exhausted. Are you working too hard? You were breathing a lot. And I was like, oh man, that backfired yeah. on me. <laughs> They're just worried about you now. <laughs> like, right, oh, right, no. exactly. But, you know, it just, again, it just kind of depends on your ability to communicate to the person that's in front of you because everybody hears things differently and you got to understand who that person is and how they're going to hear whatever it is that you're trying to express. But yeah, yeah, breath is yeah. huge. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that this practice has helped you connect with people socially in a different way? Like off of the table? Like, do you find that some of your interactions may be influenced by like gait analysis or like you can like tell when people are like having more labored breathing or how's that like changed your life outside of the massage room or do you just try and kind of keep that in there? Um, I get, I, I, I definitely worry that my friends and family get a little sick of it because I'm definitely, I'm always thinking about it. I mean, you can't not, once you notice that stuff, it's hard to not notice. Um, so I, I, I definitely, I've learned to kind of keep it to myself, but I, I think that, um, 
I don't know. I feel like relationally it comes into play. It's really come into play more later on in life. I think in the beginning I was too unsure about it in my own self and a little bit insecure about it. And, um, and I think as I've become more secure in, in, you know, what I do and, and what I know that, and, and I've talked to enough friends and family to really express kind of what I, what I do know. I think that, um, they, they're, I feel like a valuable contributor to a lot of different conversations. Whereas in the past, I, I think I would have thought, you know, oh, I'm just a massage therapist. I didn't really, I don't really, I don't know. Cause, cause you know, like I said, 20 years ago, the, the field was so different, but at this point, I think, um, a lot of people turn to me with, you know, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? And, and, and what would you do in this scenario? And I definitely feel like that feels value. I feel valued as a contributor to society, as a contributor to my community. And I think that's a, that's a good feeling. That's a really good feeling. Um, I don't know. I hope that answered your question. I feel like yeah, it's just yeah. kind of, um, I, I never stop thinking about it for sure, which makes me feel like I'm in the right field. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a fine line between talking about it too much and just being able to offer up information kind of when I feel like it's important or when I'm asked. Yeah. Yeah. I know that, that answered it pretty well. I was just going to say that I feel like it's made me just a little bit more sensitive. Um, You know, I feel like it by interacting with such a wide populace, people that I normally wouldn't be coming into contact with, it's really opened my eyes to just like all walks of life and really connected me to the heart of like what you were saying earlier about like everyone just wants to feel safe and loved and people that I might have just normally like not paid any attention to. Now there's a little bit of softening, a little bit of opening to where it's like, that person could be my client, you know, like this could be someone that is like, not like in a, you know, everybody's going to give me money, but like every, like there's just more connection to everybody that I talk with in that I'm able to recognize, you know, like, oh, they're like really tense. Like that must be kind of uncomfortable uh, without like super dissecting, but yeah, I just yeah. feel connected. I mean, I think I think the classic is kind of like when you're in high school. High schoolers will get really judgy about each other because they don't understand this stuff. And so, if somebody walks funny, or somebody talks funny, or somebody whatever has you know do does something slightly different in high school, they tend to get teased and judged. And I think when you start to really understand all the layers that goes into why somebody would walk differently or hold their head differently or talk differently or respond, whatever it is, then you start to kind of have a lot more softness, like you said, and a lot more compassion. And I think that becomes you know, a very clearly a healing element for on a, on a community level, on like a cultural level. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things, I mean, beyond just like the physical way that they show up, you know, I've had some clients who will, I mean, they want to get to know you. They start talking, sharing some of their beliefs on the world. And there's definitely been moments where like, I don't really agree with you, you know, and I'm not going to like sit there and argue with them by any means because that's right. not my role. But at the same time, to be able to show up and still provide an exceptional service and to still care about their wellness, it's been like a practice. It's been like the edge of normally I'd be like, well, you know what? Screw you, bud. But now it's more <laughs> like, okay, you have this mental concept that you're attaching yourself to, which is okay. But ultimately I still want you to be well, you know? And I think that yeah. that's been, it's just been such a compassion driving force in my life and it really has been profound in that way yeah know? that's awesome brett it's yeah. awesome it's it's so well said perfect yeah, yeah cool awesome. yeah so um we're getting pretty close to the time here uh yeah where can people find you what how can people plug <laughs> in with you i'm sure everybody who's come who already knows you is just like come on we already know this but <laughs> some people this could be their first introduction to you so what do you offer to people who maybe don't live in California and how can they keep plugged into your platform? Uh, well, YouTube is the big one. Um, so I have a whole channel on YouTube and lots of techniques and lots of ideas about how to work. Um, so that's Rebel Massage on YouTube. And then my website is rebelmassage.com. And then anything kind of extending from there. So um, uh, you can you – can, I have – articles that I write and a, and a podcast that I, that I 
produce, but that is through and for ABMP, but it's also on my website. So you can kind of go in either direction there. Um, and then, um, what else? Instagram, Facebook, all the social media platforms pretty much. Um, and then I have products that I sell, which I also very much love. And, um, I, you know, just kind of as a massage therapist, I knew what I needed and I wanted and I made some and it turns out other people wanted it too. So <laughs> it's been pretty popular. Um, but yes, basically rebelmassage.com, definitely the YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, oh, and the Massage Mentor Institute, which is a collaboration with Diane Mikowski. And we are building a ginormous and amazing continuing education center. So if you have graduated and you're looking for CE classes, we are a collaboration of phenomenal instructors from around the world, like big, big name instructors who have come together and put their classes into the Institute. And so you can kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, if you want to learn about the shoulder, you can look at like five or six or 10 different instructors version on the shoulder and, and make whatever you want, take whatever you want out of that and make it your own. So it's not just like learning from one person. Um, my, I have classes on there and lots of other incredible people. So um, but again, links to there from my website. So the massage mentor institute.com, but rebelmassage.com is the main one. That'll all be in the descriptions of wherever you find this video. Is, is that virtual too? Is that something, or do you have to it's be? It's all virtual. Yeah. It's Whoa. all online. I yeah. love that idea. We offer like, we offer jam series and we offer all sorts of cool, uh, extra curricular kind of things to, to enhance all the parts of who you are in your career. Mm. So lots of good stuff over there. I also wanted to rep your blog too. I was reading through a lot of those articles in preparation for this and I was just like, okay, just one more. Like eight articles <laughs> later, it was actually really informative. I really liked it. Oh, and I don't thanks. read that much uh, online stuff. So that's just me thanks. kind of geeking out. I write those articles for ABMP and then I'm, I host them on my blog as well. So they're all, they're all in the ABMP Massage and Bodywork magazine, which comes out every other month. And then um, I have them on my blog as well. Wow. I guess I didn't notice that. I get those those uh, magazines, but I haven't actually, I guess, paid attention enough. Great. <laughs> it's a lot. There's a lot of yeah. information out there, but yeah. it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Awesome. Allison, this has been such a treat. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Brad. It's been yeah. equally as much of a treat for me. I'm so, I'm, I've had a lot of fun with this conversation being yeah. here. I'm glad. All right. We will see you next time. Okay, bye. bye. All right, friends, that was the episode. Thank you so, so, so much for listening all the way through till the end. Uh, Allison and myself both very much appreciate it. If you want to stay in touch with her platform, which I encourage you to do if you liked what she had to offer today, head on over to rebelmassage.com. She has an amazing blog like we talked about, uh, or Rebel Massage on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. She also has the Massage Mentor Institute.com, where her and a bunch of other amazing teachers, including the show's very own Tom Myers, uh, that we've had on a couple weeks ago, uh, all getting together to teach their unique perspectives on body work. That is going to be huge. I definitely am going to be plugging into that. She's also got her body butter, which you can find on uh, rebelmassage.com. So if you're a therapist and you're looking for a new uh, lubricant to utilize, I really encourage that. She sent me some and it is wonderful. So Thank you so much for listening. We will catch you next week with another book review. And then following that, we got another very special episode. Every episode special. Everybody's special. They got their own thing, you know? So that is it. If you want to check the links, they're down in the description waiting for your eyes and your finger to click on. So thank you so much. I will catch you next week. <laughs>